Project X, aka Project Holiday. Yep. We're going to Cornwall. Buzzing. Yep. Why are we going to Cornwall though? To find some witches. So you came here when you were younger, right? Yeah, with my dad and um, my family, just like on a little holiday. Nice. And we stayed in this little caravan park. Um, and when we came out one evening, there was like all these ribbons like tied in the trees and all this like ritual um, stuff like laid out. So like there'd been something happened out overnight. And so I knew it was like a very like witchy area. Mm -hmm. um, and then we found out there's a museum of witchcraft here. We did. I'm super excited. I've never been to Cornwall. Cornwall Virgin. Nice. So and a witch is love a virgin. They, so <laughs> you could be in some trouble. <laughs> but we uh, we did call up the museum, didn't we? Yes. Ask if we could film inside. They said, eh, eh. Yeah, annoyingly enough. No they said muggles no. allowed. Yeah. No. <laughs> but we've got a, a little hidden GoPro on yeah. us. Yeah. Um, James Bond style. Yeah, we're, we're going proper covert investigation. <laughs> um, so yeah, apologies if the uh, footage isn't great, but there we go. Oh, I hope proper we can... undercover Project X. Exactly. Not undercover. Yeah. Un Commando Project yeah. X. <laughs> um, but I reckon there'll be some cool stuff in there. And hopefully it kind of um, attaches the dots that are... Uh, and we can find out about the ritual stuff that we keep thinking we're coming across. That's it, yeah. So, yeah. Cool, this is creepy. Let's let's kill the camera now. Just our oh, horses. Oh, there we go. He's a goat man. Um, yeah, the staff. Well? The staff get forked here. <laughs> <laughs> this has been your trip. Uh, yeah, it has. Oh my god. I know. Can't do not buy some memorabilia. Butt bug. Test it out when we go. <laughs> Right, so we literally just got back to our TP from Wigwam, the, TP yeah. tent, <laughs> hotel from the Witch Museum. Um, weird, like as you saw, we couldn't film in there. Yeah, not allowed. And um, obviously we did, <laughs> but more covertly. Yeah. Right? What are you gonna do? Use magic on us? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we used a little hidden GoPro <laughs> and our phone when we could. Um, so apologies if the quality is not up to scratch. But at least we're getting the content. Yeah, there. and uh, we found a local witch. We did. We did. What was her name again? Gemma Gary. She's an author, and uh, I spoke to her, and we're going to meet her tonight, <laughs> and it's going to be good fun. I hope. Yeah. If so we where back. where where are we meeting her? Some place called. She suggested. She said it was like a witch place, Rocky right. Valley. It's about forty minutes from here. Instead of dusk, Meeting right? Dusk. Dusk. What is what is dusk? It's uh, dust. <laughs> it's, um, dusk. Anybody? <laughs> it's that's copyright. <laughs> it's um, 
when the dark, the night goes to like it's literally like half hour from now. I reckon. I don't. What time is dark? Nine, nine yeah. thirty. Fair. Yeah. Creepy timing. <laughs> yeah, late timing. But I want to talk to you about something because when I was googling her, mm. another story came up from a local um, newspaper that I wanted to talk about because we we're so lucky we managed to get an interview of her, and it's quite funny that they were quite weird about us filming in there. But I found this story in Cornwall Live. Right. The headline. Witches, abuse, and murder. The pagan paedophile ring that rocked Cornwall. Jesus. And I've been reading it. I literally have been reading it. And it's about these, um, it's from 2012. And it basically alleges that there was a coven in St. Ives that were carrying out, and quotes, ritualistic, sickening sex abuse of young girls. And these people all got jailed. Um, there's pictures of them in like white robes, like carrying swords. Like, I don't know if you can see that. But, mate, look at that. Wow, that is creepy. We saw loads of sword stuff and loads of Satan stuff. In there was loads in the museum. Legit. And this story here, I mean, I don't really want to give you any horrible um, nightmares or anything, but it says the offences range from extremely serious to truly horrifying. And he was a high priest of a witch's coven that they met in an undisclosed location and ordered girls to carry out his sick fantasies. And it looks as if they murdered someone and two people survived and... Um, their trial was said to have featured ritualistic, sickening abuse of young, young children. Disgusting. The scars left on two victims who cannot be named are so obvious that it would seem extremely unlikely for either of them to have any real prospect of recovery. No way. So this is some dark stuff which we need to speak about tonight with this woman. I was going to say, you know what we've got to do? This We've got the perfect opportunity tonight to speak to a witch and get kind of their perspective and maybe the truth on what, what happened then. This could be... Night. Project Dead. Yeah, legit. <laughs> um, but we're going to go meet Gemma and we're going to send the full interview. Yeah. And put it up. So let's get ready. At least we can film this time with the equipment. Yes, um, exactly. But yeah, let's get ready and head off then. Sweet. Uh, Exciting. Okay. Yeah, mum. Tom, do you want to shine the light a bit? Just so I can see. So, what is this building essentially? Um, it's derelict water now. Yeah. Oh, okay. The labyrinth? Yeah. There's two of them. What, does the, what is the symbolism behind this? Well, in, um, for witches, they're important symbols because they represent the entrance into the other world and the journey into the other world. So, um, like the one you saw in the museum, yeah. the piece of stage that you might trace your finger in over and over, in and out, and that would sort of um, facilitate a trance state. I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. it's a, any repetitive actions in, in ritual sort of quieten the conscious mind and let the subconscious come through. This, this actually is quite a good uh, stand out. Gemma, local witch, tell yeah. us tell us about you. Yeah. Tell us, tell us more. We want to know everything. <laughs> <Obviously>, <laughs> everything. Everything, everything. <laughs> Give us a quick intro, just uh, a quick summary to who you are. I, I practice um, what some people might call traditional witchcraft. Um, this is a witchcraft that draws upon the historical forms of craft that tend to be more operative in nature, again, you know, the magical side, making charms, amulets, talismans, that sort of thing. Yeah. 
and it's very rude in the landscape, so getting out into certain places is very important as well. Give us a bit more detail on that, like what, what is the other world, what are we talking about? Like... Well, the other world, it's, um, it's we need to run parallel to this world, so you have the physical manifest world where we you know, live and have our general day to day lives, but woven in between and within this is the other world, the spirit world, so it's not only the, the world of the, the unseen spirits, also virtues and energies of the land are the sort of spiritual aspect of the physical land. Sure. When you say spirit, do you mean, as, is it our spirit or is it like ghost and that kind of thing, like in terms of? Spirit is an all encompassing term, oh. isn't it? Can, yes, um, in a magical sense, it would be often spirit helpers. It's the idea of the familiar spirit, which is how, and really all people have it's the, that spirit guide that could be used often in traditional sort of the village magic. So it would happen that often have the familiar spirit that they would engage with in their workings, and spirit as in the virtue of the landscape as well, that's drawn upon a lot. So in your experience, how long have you been like practicing the your Um twenty something years. The time and time. Yeah. Is there any have you ever come across something that's shocked you or you thought like my shock is probably the right word, left you speechless where you're like, Oh wow, this is a cut above and beyond because we um one of the things we found uh, when we were just playing with our voice recorders, we found a little bit of EVP, mm -hmm. which honestly we were like, oh, we came to find ghosts, but this was like off the charts. Is there anything <laughs> that you come across like that? Yeah, I think certainly um, in group ritual, we sometimes have voices. They tend to be just outside the perimeter of the circle. We could be in the middle of nowhere in a cave, and there'd be a woman's voice manifest. We've had lights, blue lights coming into the circle. Um, apparitions. Does it tend to be blue light? Because I know there was someone that stayed at Binsden who mm. saw blue, blue cross. Yeah, blue yeah that's a recurring thing. Mm. Blue, blue lights. Yeah. So there is a, a firm connection between like the spirit realm and ghosts, for want of a better word, and witchcraft, which kind of operates within the central. Yeah, witchcraft, witchcraft rituals are very much about accessing the spirit world and breaking down that barrier between the physical and the spirit world. And, because one of the things that is why we wanted to look into witchcraft is we've been to two different locations now where we found what we believe to be evidence of rituals happening mm. and we spoke with an occultist at the start of uh, when we were doing this and he said that quite often you'll have like occultists or witches that would go to areas where people like us shop looking for ghosts and cleanse it or, or do that sort of thing so uh, one of the things we found we found like a lot of candles we found mm. lots of bundles of sticks we found lots of like um, stone circles, stone circles yeah. which are used as fire pits, and we thought maybe you could give us a light on like what maybe other people were doing, or like if that is witchcraft, or if we just stumbled across like someone's camp or something. No, I mean, it could be um, certainly rituals involving witchcraft. You sometimes have a fire, so a central fire pit. Um, generally, though, a lot of witch groups and individuals tend to try and leave a place. There's no sign that they had been there. Right. So sometimes you might have people who go and particularly want to do things and you know, just for effect, mm. you know, and perhaps dabblers as well. But even dabbling can have you know, a magical psychic effect on a place because the people doing something, they don't particularly know what they're doing. That can open something up and leave things behind that haven't been dealt with properly. So, yeah. so you think potentially a lot of the time it could just be kind of locals or people that have went there to kind of almost play a prank or to scare people away from the area? It could be, it could be, yes, yes, yes that possibility. Yeah. So with, so you say that there's an other world and there's a this world, within this realm, like, I don't know how to phrase it, do you have special powers, do you have like abilities that are like, which abilities, I'm finding it hard to put into words. Well, I, I think like, like we were kind of speaking off camera earlier, when people hear witchcraft, like you instantly think, like the norm, right? I, I, Voodoo dolls. Yeah, legit. Yeah. Um, like, like, it's, it's what you kind of see in the, like, in general, like, media or, like, online, whatever. But, like, what is the powers? Like, do, do you have the ability to do certain things that perhaps us normal, <laughs> not normal, <laughs> totally wrong word, but, 
but yeah, yeah. some non magical yeah, things um, people can do. Yeah, witches who perhaps go down the more magical routes, they, they would draw upon natural energies or virtues from the lands um, and take these into the, themselves, into their practice, and focus those into magical arts. So, so it's very much nature based. It is, yeah, and it's perhaps um, a natural form of, of prayer. You know, prayer is to get asked for something to be done, whereas a witch might try and use the virtues of the landscape around them or certain tools, herbs, and what have you, and rituals, and the focus of their mind and their will to achieve something. I kind of noticed earlier, I know we've spoken about religious connections quite a bit. When we went to the museum um, earlier, there was a lot of kind of like satanic. Uh, connections. Baphomet, is that right? Yeah, mm. Baphomet was one of the, the kind of things that came up, and if I'm not mistaken, that is that the devil, or is that uh, the form? Yeah, uh, the Baphomet is um, kind of a, a construct to embody the universe, really, and creation. It's Kevin, the light betwixt the horns, the base animal, uh, the hooves, and it's, um, you know, it's a, a creature betwixt and between. But it, is, you know, it has been linked to the devil also because of the horns. For sure. Like the, um, the Bible interestingly makes no mention of the devil having horns. It's something that comes, seems to have been grafted onto the old nature gods. Some, some of those were horned gods. Or right. To suppress that, the church grafted their idea of Satan onto his horn and being. So, in terms of that connection between kind of like Satan, uh, Satanism and witchcraft, is, is there a, a solid connection? Is it kind of like, I don't know, good person? I don't, I don't know. Is that... <laughs> Are there good witches and bad witches? Yeah. Is that what you're trying to yeah. say? I've known some bad witches, but <laughs> in general. Bad people? Or is it <laughs> yeah. like, we know yes. some bad people. Yeah. <laughs> bad people, bad witches. Right. Yes. But um, you know, generally, Satanism is it's a, a separate path. It's, yeah. um, it's about inverting Christianity, mm. whereas witchcraft, it's, it can have Christian elements, pagan elements, but it's, it's not so much about battling against Christianity or Satanism. So from that, we looked that up, we looked up Corbel Witches and we came across uh, you and we came across a few other um, people, but one of the top stories we found was from the BBC from 2012, which is about um, ritual abuse and witches. You know, you know the story? Um, yeah, there's been you know, quite more you know, things like that rustling around sure. since the 1980s. Yeah, from yeah. the 70s it was. Um, 70s, yeah. Oh, I don't know if we'll get into the specifics, but do was when all of that stuff was coming out, was that the, the witch community felt like a, the brunt of it? Was it something that... I think there was a lot of fear, you know, fear people feeling their jobs, you know, parents who happened to be pagans or witches, you know, I think in, in the 70s and 80s really did fear their children being taken from them because of their spiritual mm. beliefs and their yeah. you know. And in terms of those people that committed those things, were they really in the name of witchcraft or any sort of like sect or was it because they were just, you know, very nice individuals and, you know? I think you know, in some people, if they have a mind to, can use the, the cloak of the occult or witchcraft because it would give them some sort of sense of power over vulnerable people. You know, if, if you have somebody who wants to abuse somebody, the easiest way to do that is to come across them as a powerful person and, you know, use that to gain control. And if you don't know much about it from the outside, it's just strong mm. enough to... Okay. Yes. How big would you say the witch community is in sort of the UK? Or? I think quite big. Yeah. Bigger yeah. than we would expect. Yeah, and we attend um, conferences sometimes and okay. many hundreds of people. Yeah, how how is it organised? Is it as like simple as like sending that out on Facebook or other other? Yeah, it used to be in um, paper magazines or have you and since the internet comes along those pages advertising. So I didn't know yeah. if it moves more like secretively or if it's like it's certainly come out of the shadows, yeah, that's what it was. It was groups and individuals, their, their workings are very much kept private. Yeah. But a lot of the witchcraft community is very much out there now. I think it's things. for the best. Like, yeah, it's definitely yeah. changing the kind of, not that there was a perception as such, but it's letting us into it more and kind of see it for what it is rather than kind of what, what you Let see. Let to wonder. That's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, I think that's all for me. Yeah, I kind of. Uh, but Sam, do you have any other questions? I, I don't know if you've already asked it, but how, like, to end this off, like, how does one become a witch? Like, are you born a witch? Can you become a witch? Like, how how, how do you kind of get into that? <laughs> you can um, 
feeble a witch in the sense that you have that natural inclination towards the other world and wanting to engage with that. Um, there's the magic of witchcraft initiation that can be a solitary thing, the traditional initiation rites. In Cornwall, we have these things, Logan stones or rocking stones, where you have to go to a stone at midnight and try and get along and off the stone nine times without rocking stones. Oh, right. That's an old, old um, initiation rite. Sounds um, impossible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Walking around a church certain times in the dark backwards. God. But for Monday and the is um, are there any movies that have got witches right, like down to like what you're? Because I, I love, witches, I love, to, I love Suspiria, I love like all that kind of stuff. But is there any that like nailed it well? Like, okay, that's that's fairly similar to what we do. There's snippets, in, yeah. In, in I mean, the old Hammer horror films, they really do ham it up, and mm. yeah, there are snippets of ritual and spell work that seem to be quite close to what would be practiced. But a lot of a lot of it's dramatised obviously well that's a, that is actually an education for our viewers Hammer horror films <laughs> go back Christopher Lee and all the stuff watch it all otherwise get off our channel snip it snip it to find the truth in, yeah. in that picture um, well listen I guess all that's left to say is thank you very much uh, you. for your time yeah, it's honestly so insightful and it's bit, we are in Rocky Valley which is hard for us to find but it's a really great location mm. and um, yeah it was a bit of a trek but thank you for doing this yeah, yeah. much appreciated yeah. Well, Rocky Valley was a rocky valley. It was yeah. literally like, hey, I stepped over so many times. I know. Um, Super creepy. Like, they, they seemed really comfortable there. Yeah, they did. I think it was not. I think that part at ease, though, knowing like they were comfortable. For sure, for sure. Um, like you felt the difference between here and going to Clapham Woods, right? Here, it's mad. I was gone. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because you knew like, like we're in safe hands. Kudos to them. They're just two ladies, and they just showed up. So um, nice as well. Yeah, very like, at first she was quite aloof. She kept, she uh, was a bit quiet. And then once we got into the interview, like, it was very interesting. She, I said to her, she said, got such an encyclopedic knowledge of all of this stuff. Like you could literally pick her brain on, um, on witchcraft all day. Yeah. Talk about so many different tracks. And she didn't just know a little bit about a lot of things. She knew a lot about a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I think, I don't think we upset her, so I think we're all right. Though. And, and, and even anything that we were quite, like, especially me, like individually that like I was quite ignorant to I think she like took it quite well and she didn't care about answering the Satanist yeah. question and also the the child abuse question so that was good I thought she might have been evasive there um, but I, I think and we, we said it so many times in the interview I think that's what's important because this interview was really to clear up the kind of what you see in Hollywood huh, and kind of hear about word of mouth versus what the truth is and just nice of her to give us an interview after we weren't allowed to film in the other museum because that yeah. that threw our suspicions off even more being like not allowed to film in here it made us think like well why what are you keeping secret and actually she's thrown herself open and it's very like yeah for sure so I think she gave up really good answers really insightful to kind of hear uh, the ins and outs of witchcraft um, and it's really not as I would say creepy um, as you'd think, like, jeez, that, that mist is creepy. Yeah, the mist is mad. Um, but yeah, like, it's, it's really not like what you think, like, to find out it's more kind of nature-based um, is news to me. Yeah. How about you? Um, but yeah, man, they're, they're just yeah. innocent people. Jeremy Gary, certified witch. Legit. Nice. Whoa, why does that come on? Look what has just come in my post. Essential witchcraft reading.